everybody. My name, my name is Aziza Khabibi, and my book is titled Unashamed, A Life Tainted. Um, I think probably the best thing for me to do is to just read the introduction, start with the introduction of my book, because it will tell you a lot of what the book is about. Um, for begin, for starters, my father was the music video director of Killing Me Softly by the Foodies. And um, I've been featured on the Katie Court Show, as well as Pix 11 News and Good Day New York Street Talk, um, sharing my story to raise awareness against child molestation and domestic violence. So, I will get started with my introduction. Though we are blessed with the right to hope, dream, attain happiness, and wish the best for ourselves and others, because we are human, we experience pain, grief, heartache, and suffering. Unfortunately, most people's encounter with agony diffuses and sometimes extinguishes their ability to hope, dream, and be happy. Well, in my experience, pain has increased my appreciation for pleasure. Grief has strengthened my ability to empathize with those in anguish. Heartache confirms that I have a heart to begin with, giving me the longing to fill it with eternal love and happiness and suffering, well suffering. The things that I have suffered through are as fuel to the fire that ignites my determination to make my dreams a reality. Before we continue, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Aziza Khabibi McGill Ayinde Jones. I know what you're thinking. Why in the world do I have so many names? Well, let me explain. Aziza is my first name, obviously, and it means precious. Khabibi is my middle name, my parents gave me, but it's not on my birth certificate. Oh, and Khabibi is Swahili for little lady. McGill is my father's surname, his government slave name, as he calls it, that he was born with. Ayinde, which means we prayed for them and they came, is the African name my dad legally changed his surname to before I was born but forgot to sign to my birth certificate. Despite that, Ayinde is on my social security card along with Miguel. Go figure. Finally, Jones is my married name. Well, was my married name. <sighs> now that we've got out that out of the way, I have a dream to tell you about. When I was six years old living in a small apartment with my family, I woke up from my nap time in a daze. Everything around me looked as distorted as the reflection in a funhouse mirror. The doorway and windows of the bedroom I shared with my siblings appeared big enough for a fairy tale giant to fit through. When I got out of bed, I, I felt like I was walking on air, and though my feet were touching the floor, I didn't feel like they were. On top of everything else, each step I took closer to the door of my room seemed to set the door further away from me. My head felt like it was filled with water, and when I inhaled, I could hear every single particle that entered my nostrils and lungs. By the time I got into the kitchen, which in actuality was only a short five steps from my bed, everything I just described disappeared. It was like I had walked through the twilight zone. But wait, that's not the dream. My mom was cooking black eyed peas and rice for dinner. I remember the pungent nutty aroma as if I had a pot of it cooking right now. The humidity in the kitchen created from the steam being released by the pressure cooker made me feel as if I needed a bath. I shook off the last remaining feeling of sleep and stretched my small skinny body out with a yawn. I told my mom about the dream I had during my nap where I saw a very handsome black man with a short perfect afro sitting on a big gold black chair. This is the dream. The man had an intense but soft light glowing behind his head. And though I didn't know him, I felt like I loved him more than any little girl could fathom at my age. I approached his feet and reached out to touch them. That's when I noticed his chair wasn't making contact with the floor. In fact, though I felt like I was standing on a surface myself, there was no floor beneath my feet. Who are you, asked the man. I asked the man. I am your father, Aziza. He spoke in a voice that swept me with the feeling of warm sunshine on a fall, on a fall afternoon. But I already have a daddy, so how could you be my daddy too, I asked. The man told me he was different from my dad and he was my special father who would take care of me no matter what. Distracted with interest in my surroundings, I saw a pretty woman standing not too far from me when I looked around. I wondered why I didn't see her before. Who is that lady? I asked the man. Very matter of factly, he answered, that is you, Aziza. After his answer, I had no more questions. 
The man explained to me that I would have to endure many things in my life. He told me I would have happy times and very sad times. But no matter how bad things got or how alone I felt, I had to remember that he would always be with me. As I listened to him, I had an overwhelming need to touch his skin. It was so brilliant and richly brown that it almost shimmered. I reached out to graze his leg, but before my small fingers could make contact, my body was snatched away like a whirlwind sweeping up a leaf. Suddenly, I was awake in my bed. I could still, still hear the man's voice echoing in my head when I sat upon my smurf-covered mattress. As I described the dream to my mother, she stopped what she was doing and listened intently. She told me I should tell my father. I anxiously, anxiously awaited for his return as I tried to hold on to the amazing feeling that was coursing through my small frame. When I told my dream to my father, he explained that the man I was talking to while I slept was God. He went on to say that God is the creator and controller of all things, and he is watching everything that we do. My dad told me that God protects us from harm and punishes us when we do bad things. Growing up, my parents taught us to pray before we went to bed and to say grace before we ate our meals. But this was the first time I was consciously able to fully grasp the idea of a higher being that was responsible for our existence. I had many questions for my father, and he answered them the best he could. After that afternoon, my communication with my creator increased. I prayed to God at different times in the day for everything from my little ponies for my birthday to making daddy not beat us so hard. When bedtime came and it was time for our prayers, it was I who reminded my mom if she forgot. And when my parents weren't home, I was the one who led our scripted nighttime message to our Lord with my siblings. As time went on, even though my dream was not at the forefront of my mind, whenever I was truly in dire straits, I would draw the image of God from my sleep vision and speak to him. As far as I was concerned, I knew God personally. He was my best friend whom I conversed with on a daily basis. Whether God existed or not was never a question. question. To me, the one was as real as my earthly mother and father. I was so connected and familiar with the representation of him from my dream, I even argued with my teacher in Sunday school about the color of his skin. My display of passionate conviction to the fact that God was black had forced the teacher to give up her point, and soon after I became her favorite student. Everything negative that happened to me, I decided must be God's will and was either an opportunity to learn a lesson or punishment for something I did wrong. All of my positive experience, I graciously accepted as God's reward for making good choices and doing the right things. I fell in love with him in a way, and this is how I have experienced God to this day. What I am about to share with you are stories from my life. I will describe my experiences during my childhood, my challenges as a teenager, and how both have contributed to my continuation as an adult. I will open my thoughts and my heart so you can get a better understanding of my relationship with my creator. How the path he and she chose for me has molded me into the person I am today. And how that person navigates life and manages being human. I must warn you, this story is not for the faint of heart. There is unfathomable tra tragedy, sadness, conflict, and scandal. But there are also many rewarding moments of happiness, joy, triumphs, and revelations. I write this book as a form of testimony. We are spiritual beings having a human experience, and I offer mine to you in hopes that they can contribute to your life or that of someone you know. Some of the names of my family and friends have been changed at their request, but everything else you read is real and true. As I write this introduction, it is the 12th day of July in the year 2012. I have been living in East Orange, New Jersey with my children for the last 11 years. My eldest daughter is away in a summer program at Rutgers University, and I'm trying to coordinate babysitting for the rest of my children during my work hours. My bedroom is a wreck from the last few days of running in and out of the house, changing outfits to suit different events in my crazy schedule. And my kids are waiting for me to go to my mom's house to wash clothes. I work as an expediter at a restaurant in Montclair, New Jersey, and I'm striving to succeed in running my own business, baking cakes and catering parties. I'm currently single and decidedly choosy, a filmmaker wants to keep me as his supporting role in his scandalous romantic comedy. A co-worker thinks I am Aphrodite's incarnate. A politician yearns to make me his personal Oshun. And my heart has been pierced by the spear belonging to, the soldier of the, to a soldier of the Lord. It is only by the grace of God and my use of the ability he gave me to manipulate cash flow that I have been able to pay my bills each month. Currently, my rent is overdue, and my bank account may be overdrawn next week when the car insurance payment posts. 
Yet, I am thankful that I have a much needed vehicle to even insure. My kids are well fed and we have a beautiful roof over our heads, so I'm grateful to say the least. Experience in my story will raise many questions. Even the nature of some of my experiences may prompt you and others to pass judgment on decisions I've made in my life. In the words of my grandmother, I say, such is life. Being criticized is a part of my interactions with other people on the planet that I live on. Some criticisms are constructive, while others are feeble attempts at someone trying to point me in a direction that they themselves have never been. While I may learn things from the input of others, I don't let them affect what in my heart I know to be true. In the Yoruba belief system, there are deities who govern different aspects of the human existence. Oshun represents love, sex, and the finer things in life. Shango stands for strength and protection. Buddhists believe that death is a cycle of life that should be accepted as a form of art. Doing so will free the spirit to appreciate everything as beautiful. Jesus said that all who come through him will have everlasting life. And the definition of the Tao is the way. My point being, with religion we have a choice of which to follow. Different things work for different people under different circumstances. We are all God's unique creations placed on different paths with a variety of choices to make and a plethora of options to choose from. Innately, we know the truth, and the way comes from deep within our spirit. So whether you believe my choices to be correct or not is one of the choices that affects your life, which in reality have little to do with mine. I do my best not to pass judgment on anyone because I do not like to be judged. I teach my children that you should treat others how, yourself, what, how you yourself want to be treated, and I practice what I teach. I am far from perfect. To me, the only thing that can be conceived as perfection is God. And if he and she are already perfect, what fun would it be if we were perfect as well? We are designed to have experiences, make mistakes, learn and grow for them, and learn and grow from them. Everything that has happened to me is consequential to the person I am today. So keeping that in mind, I have little regret or shame for anything. So before I continue, I'd like to explain that 